Well, what's behind this door? Well, today I had a call from a viewer who said sauerkraut was stored here in the 1950s. One man actually told me he lived behind that door and paid rent. But they, you, were still unable to give us the answer to the bigger question, one that is a true Louisville mystery. Why is it here? Towering one mile east of downtown Louisville, built in 1878, these stunning photos from U of L's digital archives reveal a fortress, a castle, a structure unlike any other still with us today, hulking here over Lexington and Payne Streets until 1968. 20 days, two months, in the city workhouse. A frightening place. Well, nobody wants to go to the workhouse. A workhouse? Could it be one key to solving a big Louisville mystery? One mile from the heart of the downtown business district, 12 blocks east of the convention center, we are taking you to see for the first time a remarkable sight. It's hidden and closed to the public. It is to this day an unknown. Everybody drives by this and goes, I've always wondered what this was. Yes. It's just sort of there. Yeah, it's just kind of this anonymous space that's usually dark and and um, everybody always is curious what's behind the door. That door, Let's you see. think at least 150 years old. Yes. And it was just tucked in here in the side of the hill. Yes. What on earth is behind it? Only Mike Ratterman, the owner, the, the mystery is unlocked. Here we go. Has the key. And inside, damp, dark, so quiet you can hear a pin drop. What are the acoustics of this place? Hear the sound of this place. It's such a mystery. We asked Louisville's most respected historian, Tom Owen, to come along with us. We had no idea it has been such a focus for him for years. Are there many true Louisville mysteries where we just don't have a real clue as to what they are? Well, this one is the biggest that comes to mind because this is not the first time I've ever walked this road on this site. Mm -hmm. I mean, over the last five years, seven years, I have pushed every button I knew. Owen has spent those years going over maps like these, showing Louisville's original footprint, looking for an underground clue. The most accurate maps show no evidence. Do you mean to tell me Tom Owen is stumped? I can tell you on this, previously and currently, Tom Owen is stumped. It's hidden underneath a home on Lexington Road, the house above it on a hill. Take a look, a giant man-made cavern. All beautiful cut stone. It is believed to have been put here just a few years after the end of the Civil War. Lights on the walls installed by Ratterman highlight a space that says, wow. Look at the stonework from the ceiling to the floor cut by tremendous craftsmen. My wife Annie and I both realized how special the, the place is, which is why we've taken the care that we have of it and, uh, and have just been enjoying using it and enjoying the mystery of it. Well, there have to be some clues. Back to that workhouse, it was 300 yards away from this cavern. If you go to jail, you're gonna have to break up a lot of rocks. Inmates busted up rocks at the quarry on site of the workhouse. Could it have been some kind of corporal punishment site for the workhouse? We looked over the cavern for other possibilities. There were large scale um, uh, slaughterhouses, pork houses on the other side of the creek, on the other side of the street along the middle fork of Airgrass Creek, but there's no indication of smoke on the walls or anything like that. Other clues, there are five large air returns that reach high out of the cave. This cavern was designed to breathe. And basically I think they're just wicking air down and then out through the ceiling. Ratterman offered a theory that we decided to pursue. What you think this is? It, I guess it's, you know, I can only guess, but it's, it seemed, to me it seems more like a lagering tunnel for a storage of beer. Um, but I don't know that for certain because we haven't been able to, to turn up any records.
Before Prohibition, Louisville was a full-blown beer city. <laughs> its German immigrants made it thrive that way. There were more than 20 breweries with names like Ertl's and Fairs, and half a mile down the street from Ratterman's Cavern sat the Phoenix Brewery Company, chugging out kegs and bottles in Phoenix Hill. And I had read articles about their output. I mean, it was on the level of what, you know, a modern day kind of Anheuser-Busch would have been uh, in the city of Louisville. Uh, the beer will be ready, it depends on the, what type of beer it is, anywhere from two weeks to a month. Nathaniel Gravely, the 32-year-old founder of Gravely Brewing, put his new business right at the site of the old Phoenix Brewing Company on Baxter Avenue. And when he first checked it out... And so when we come outside and it's like you walk out the door and it's like boom, you just kind of see these like, what are those? I mean, Take a look side by side. Two of the original Phoenix beer caverns still partially exist here. Inside, we found air vents in the walls just like the air vents in Mike Ratterman's cavern a half mile down the road. We also noticed an air vent in the ceiling at Gravely, same down the road. One difference, this trough at the Gravely site carried cold water to keep the stored beer cool. So did this UK history and anthropology major turned brewery owner solve the mystery for us? Well, maybe. And you might be part of the key to unlocking it. For perhaps, yeah, I mean here, here the history is definitely a little more, I think, sound and solid because we have these old kind of footprints and like city layouts of where the brewery used to be. It didn't go that far, so that's why I think that's kind of the, the outlier a little bit. Nathaniel says there's no evidence Phoenix ever used that cavern for overflow storage. We do know this. It appears to have been expensive to build at the time, and somehow the biggest of them all is dodging the experts, a ghost on all of the maps. I overhear people saying there are prohibition tunnels and bomb shelters and everybody kind of works their own theory. So I think, uh, you know, the mystery of it is a natural one. Who knows? Maybe in the long run of Louisville's famed beer companies, the beer barons are up there getting the last laugh. It's here and it's dramatic and we don't know what it was for. The 19th century brewmasters raising the final toast on this true Louisville mystery. <laughs> Looks like he was having fun there. Well, our investigation is continuing in this, not stopping. With this very story tonight, we are now launching our WHAS 11 News podcast site. Such an exciting project for, for us. I'm thrilled about this. Mine is called The Profit Report, and Tom Owen came back to the station tonight. You can listen to our brand new interview by going to the WHAS 11 app, scroll down, and Bam, you'll find podcast on the front page. Click it. We'll talk about the cavern plus Louisville's history of breweries at one point bigger than bourbon. And then check out the king of Butchertown, my conversation with Andy Bleeden, why he invested early in the once forgotten neighborhood, now owns 20 properties, and the hilarious story of the first building he bought. Plus, then I explore Louisville's twisted history in the Civil War and why we have Confederate statues. You can also find these podcasts on Searching the Profit Report on Apple or Google Podcasts, as well as on SoundCloud. Cover